Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at D2S with Aki Fujimura. I'm going to talk today about what curvilinear mask writing means for design teams. Aki, curvilinear masks are now becoming mainstream, particularly at the advanced nodes and, and the advanced manufacturing processes. What's happening on the design side? How is that going to be affected and what's going to change? Yeah, exactly. Now that curvilinear designs have been enabled with the combination of multi-beam mask writers writing pixels on a, a curvilinear IoT, which produces uh, the curvilinear shapes, and uh, GPU acceleration, which computes in pixels. And now we have curvilinear masks everywhere, and this is for the sake of wafer manufacturing. But at the same time, this exact thing enables curvilinear designs. Curvilinear IoT not only produces an output of curvilinear uh, uh, mask shapes, but it can also take us input wafer target shapes that are curvilinear. What does a curvilinear shape actually look like? Yeah, so uh, good question. So uh, I don't mean any arbitrary curvilinear, right? I mean manufacturable curvilinear in this kind of a sense. So Manhattan design looks like the thing that, like an L shape or even just a straight line, right? Um, when you have a diagonal, particularly a non-45 diagonal, uh, 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 it's a non-Manhattan design anyway, all by itself. So that's kind of curvilinear, even though of course it's not really reality. Um, uh, curvilinear design, yeah, if you have uh, rounded edges, that's a curvilinear design. But really, uh, a really curvy design would look like this thing on the right, where uh, the center line is also forming a curvature. What's the benefit of curvilinear shapes for design? Right, yeah, good question. So I, I like to think of it um, kind of intuitively, right? Um, so if you had uh, a pump, water pump, that you're trying to uh, get water up the hill into the house, right? Um, uh, one way you could do it maybe is to have a series of 90 degree jogs like this, but intuitively you know that's not the most efficient thing to do. Right? It's better to have curvilinear elbows, right? Because then you have less resistance, or whatever. Um, very similar things at a very much, much smaller and faster scale um, uh, happens inside wires too, right? So th that intuition works. Um, it's of course even better if you can just make a more direct connection, right? You have less uh, distance that you have to travel on less capacitance. Um, in, in the connection. So um, this is a good uh, uh, intuition for why it is that you want curvilinear wires. You, you, you want to be able to make smooth corners, not 90 degree corners, and you want to make as direct a connection as possible. And this becomes even more important as your wires thin down, as you start pushing more data through these wires on a regular basis, right? Yeah, so um, as everybody knows on the design side, um, uh, we are interconnect limited uh, for area limitation. And we'll of course interconnect limited on performance and power. And it, uh, uh, working on the interconnect and minimizing interconnect and improving interconnect efficiency is a very, very important part of the agenda for all four things that are important, yield, power, performance, and area. What's the impact on the, the design rules, which are becoming incredibly complex, and the, the rule deck is growing almost every single node by leaps and bounds? Yeah, absolutely. So like we were saying about uh, mask rule check, and, and, uh, if you express as what you want, manufacturable shapes, then what designers are going to find is that the rule deck will actually shrink. It will actually be simpler because you're not asking to manufacture something that's impossible to manufacture. On top of that, it will be more reliably manufacturable. And that's the thing that really is going to give the best improvement. So if you express curvilinear designs or manufacturable designs, which happen to be all curvilinear because 90 degree corners are not manufacturable in fact, right? Nothing in nature can do that. So um, if you express manufacturable curvilinear designs, then you will end up with 
much more reliable manufacturing of the thing that you ask for, and you will also be much more likely to hit the nominal target for your uh, you know, capacitance or resistance or whatever it is that uh, you're extracting. So um, these are examples, and uh, the, uh, the key thing is that if you ask for manufacturable shapes, you will get more reliable manufacturing of those shapes that you ask for. What's changed also is the number of layers that are going of metal and also different types of things that are going into a package. We're, we're starting to go vertical with almost everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, it's a good point because vias are really uh, uh, important point. Uh, 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 just intuitively, again, um, if you look at uh, this is Taipei 101, but any skyscraper, right? You go into the first floor, um, you will see nothing but security and elevator shafts. They didn't even e enough place for any stores or anything, right? And it's because you have to have an elevator that goes from zero to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, and so on. And when you stack them all up, on the first floor, you have to be able to get to all of them. And because of that, the first floor is just full of elevator shafts, and that's all you got room for. A very similar things happen inside of a semiconductor chip. Because every connection, well, almost every connection, you know, some come from the top, but almost every connection has to go from a transistor to another transistor, right? You know, so every connection has to start in the lowest layer and then go up and come back down and end up on the lowest layer, right? Every single connection has to do that. And every time you do that, each via that connects between the two layers of metal, um, each via is blocking the routability of both the thing underneath and the thing above, right? So it's a, it's a very serious resource limitation in the same way that you get filled with elevator shafts and you've got room for nothing else, right? You end up with just veering and you got nothing else you can do in metal two or metal three. And uh, uh, el eliminating vias is a very, very important agenda in place and route, right? Because ha having been in it uh, before year 2000, uh, since 1979, um, I, I can tell you, I, I know via reduction is a big, big agenda in place and route. And the Manhattan assumption being broken and being able to allow curvilinear connection has got to, 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 to improve that, right? I, I don't know exactly how, but I'm sure there is innovation possible in that area. EDA progresses very efficiently, but they don't necessarily move very quickly. Do we have to change everything from the top to bottom, or does this now fit in with what's already there? Yeah, that's a really good question. The, the general perception is everything has to change, but that's not true. Right, it's definitely not true. Spice doesn't have to change. Any of the rigorous simulators don't have to change. Logic synthesis doesn't have to change. Simulate logic simulation doesn't have to change. Right, there are many things that don't have to change. And um, in general, when uh, I look back uh, in my design days, what I see is four areas that really have to change: custom design, and um, and then uh, uh, routing. Uh, routing is definitely the biggest change that would have to happen, I think. Um, and then parasitic extraction that spans both the custom world and the routing side, and design road checking and LBS and you know associated tools there. Um, so um, it's not that you can't do curvilinear designs today, right? Curvilinear routing, you kind of have to do it manually, but uh, curvilinear custom design curvilinear parasitic extraction, curvilinear DRC. These things are already possible today. It's just that it's slow. Um, if you had a, a chip full of curvilinear designs, it would take uh, quite a while to do any of these things. So you, um, uh, it, it is something that does need to be improved. But I think there's a lot of hope for it. Um, one. Uh, potential interpretation of curvilinear design in a custom space is shapes that look like this, right? Again, the objective is to ask manufacturing to manufacture manufacturable shapes. And if you do that, you will get 
the shapes that come out out of manufacturing to be more reliable. Welding, we saw an example like this before, right? This one has this red circle and um, you know it has a, a little bit of a defect there. Um, but uh, being able to do that, not just by manual work like this particular one was, but being able to do that in the general fully automated routing world that I think can uh, reduce the number of years and reduce the amount of uh, uh, capacitance and resistance and it can have significant effects on power performance and area. And parasitic extraction can already be done. This is an example of a 3D curved linear shape that's done in the rigorous simulation space. So that's no, no issue. But to be able to do a fast full chip version would require more work. And so that's something that has to be done. And DRC, we talked about this MRC and similar things I think will happen in DRC. All of the complicated rules that are arising because you're asking for shapes that can't be manufactured, those will all go away by insisting on describing shapes that are manufacturable, you'd be able to get rid of a lot of these design rules. So we think it's possible, particularly because we know by doing, having done this on the manufacturing side, we think that it's doable, especially by using GPU acceleration, pixel-based computing, and being able to do curved linear processing in the same amount of time as it would take to do any Manhattan shape and with the same degree of accuracy. Does AI fit in here as well? Can you now use machine learning to say, okay, we can pull all these things together on a level that we couldn't do just by using existing tools? Yeah, AI, particularly deep learning, is definitely applicable. And uh, there are probably multiple places here uh, that can benefit from that. And there's a lot of uh, deep learning uh, being used in uh, design automation already. And, and one thing that I would note is that overwhelming majority of those algorithms are probably directly transferable to curved linear space without hardly any work. How do we get people to work on this? I mean, what's the, what prompts them to do this? Yeah, so that, that's exactly what I'm, uh, uh, trying to say, um, you know, the, the design community that I used to be in, right, now that I'm in the manufacturing community and I'm seeing that curved linear design is now enabled, right? You know, before, uh, when you try, if you try to do curved linear design, manufacturing would say, no, we can't do it, right? That restriction has now been lifted. Curved linear manufacturing is now possible even of curved linear targets on wafer, right? So, um, uh, and there's a, a lot of benefits. So the question is, uh, you know, what would make this happen, right? And so what I would love to see is the design automation community, the EDA community kind of band together and do research on many, many of these topics, right? There are many things that's possible. I just may not a possible session in a design automation conference in 2025, right? I would love to see it in 23 or 24, but I'm being realistic that it's gonna take a little bit of time, right? You know, I don't know who would write which paper, but, you know, universities, uh, you know, the Cadence synopsis, answers, Siemens of the world, right? You know, that there, there are many people working on these types of physical design problems, and it would be great if different people, even in the CTO's office or, you know, in the research mode, right? Uh, even better is in the product mode, uh, take on these tasks and, uh, uh, you know, let's advance the state of the art because now it's possible to manufacture these shapes. Really what you're trying to do is get all the stuff to follow the shift left, right? Yeah, follow the shift left, exactly. Yeah, I want to see the world where curvilinear designs are described as what designers want and tape out to manufacturing. And then now manufacturing can take that shape, curvilinear shape, and manufacture them actually the way the designer asked for. So that means, 
you had parasitic extraction done on the shapes that are likely to actually be manufactured, right? As opposed to guessing how much the corners are gonna shape. Um, you know, guessing that a, uh, a, a rectangular via described as a rectangle is actually going to be this size oval, right? And then, you know, exactly how it's gonna look every instance. And it, um, I think it's much, much better for design to manufacturing flow and uh, doing manufacturing aware design as well as design aware manufacturing, both of those improve by having manufacturable curvilinear targets described by designers to the manufacturing segment. Aki Fujimara, thanks for a really interesting conversation. Thank you, Ed.